Well, I've already reviewed a ton of direct-to-DVD sequels, why not review this one? Inspector Gadget 2, yeah, kind of an Inspector Gadget-filled month, isn't it? This is a follow-up to the first film starring Matthew Broderick, and though it's not nearly as bad, hell, you just subtract Matthew Broderick from it, it's immediately better. It's still pretty bad. This time, Inspector Gadget is played by French Stewart of Third Rock from the Sun fame. At first you think it's gonna be exactly like the first one, with its awkward style and weird in-your-face effects that really, really suck even more this time. But as it goes on, it calms down a bit as it tries to squeeze a story in. Inspector Gadget is having a bunch of glitches and his niece Penny, now in high school, is starting to notice and tells him to go get it fixed. His inventor, however, has an even better plan, make a brand new Gadget. Enter G2, an updated version of Gadget, who seems to be a better officer in every way, not only having no glitches, but no human parts at all. That's right, she's 100% machine, and as soon as Inspector Gadget hears that, he falls immediately in love. Yeah, that's kinda weird slash creepy. She does the typical robot stuff, doesn't understand human emotion, talks like this all the time, that whole jazz. But give her credit, it's a lot more interesting than Dr. Claw escaping. Only this time it's not played by Rupert Everett, and this time you don't see his face. Well, okay, sorta. You see his mouth and his nose, sometimes you see his eyes. Actually, you kinda do see his face, but they at least make an attempt to hide it. This time it's played by some old guy with a really weird voice that sounds nothing like the original Claw, but he has the claw from the first movie, but you don't see his face like the cartoon. It's really kinda confusing. But at least we see Penny snooping around with her dog Brain, and she has the little watch. No computer book, but she has the watch, and they give her a kind of bigger part. Then it's weird, because she'll tell Brain to look after Gadget, but, you know, he's a dog, like a real dog, so he can't do anything like what he does in the cartoon, and wh what is this movie trying to be? The sad, desperate souls that actually liked the first film aren't going to connect that much with it. Like I said, Gadget's different, Penny's different, Dr. Claw is really different. And the fans of the cartoon are going to like a few things changed, but it's still clearly not trying hard enough to be the cartoon. It's almost like the filmmakers got all these really angry notes and they said, oh, okay, we're not supposed to see Claw's face, Penny's supposed to snoop around, Brain's supposed to help. Okay, we'll do that. But then for some reason, they still never looked at the cartoon. They didn't see how you're supposed to do it. And don't get me wrong, the cartoon's weird. I think it's kind of debatable whether or not it's actually even good. But it was kind of entertaining and interesting and had kind of its own unique formula and its own kind of awkward charm. This doesn't. While French Stewart is definitely a better gadget than Matthew Broderick, he still doesn't seem like he's being told the right things to do. That is to say, comedically, his line delivery just seems off. It doesn't sound like he's trying to impersonate Don Adams or do his own thing, it's just kind of weird. All my years of crime fighting Gadget Mobile is that it's always the most quiet. Right before the criminal strike. On top of that, a lot of the comedy is off. Every once in a while I get a little bit of a giggle, like I like how the bad guys are sneaking in as this band and none of the instruments they're playing matches the music that's being played behind them on an obvious recording. In fact, it's sitar music and there's not even a sitar in there. That's funny. Once in a while you'll get a little moment like that. The effects are really awful. At the very least in the first film, they tried to mix some practical effects with the CG. Here, it's all CG. And it's we don't give a crap CG. Look at this scene where this rope is supposed to wrap around Gadget. What the hell am I even looking at? It looks like one of those old Marvel hologram cards. It doesn't even look solid. The acting, pretty much from everybody, either ranges from bad to just off. I don't know what direction they were given, but it was always kind of the wrong direction. Everyone says their lines just a little strangely, and that's already made odd by the fact that they already have strange voices. The only time the acting does work a little bit is when French Stewart has to have an emotional moment. I know that sounds strange, and there aren't that many of them, but when he genuinely seems confused or sad or upset, it's done in such a brainless way that he still kind of seems sympathetic. I can't explain it, there's something weirdly genuine about it. Aside from that, I don't know what this film is going for. It'll have the little mad logo, like from the cartoon, but even that looks a little different. Why? You have the rights to Inspector Gadget, just go all out there! So, okay, is it as bad as the first one? No. There's very few things that are as bad as the first one. The first one was painful. The first one, every single time a joke was made or somebody gave a weird look, it hurt. The first film hurt. 
This film doesn't hurt, it's just dumb. It's a dumb movie. It'll probably be forgotten the minute you watch it. The first film leaves scars, scars that will never heal. This is just a lame flick. So if for some reason your kid wants to see it, you can go ahead and show it, there's nothing that's gonna screw him up. But for anyone else, if you have any interest in seeing this movie, go go gadget, don't.